Yo, what's up everybody? Lee here, aka Major League Gaming, bringing you another Pokemon Unite video. This one's going to be a little bit quicker. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through with the settings of a brand new mobile player, brand new player in general. If you're new to the game, welcome. Have fun getting tilted with every match you play. Um, JK, I haven't played any ranked yet, so I don't know how that's been imp impacted yet. Uh, but let's go ahead, without further ado, let's go ahead and go through the system settings to give you what I believe will be the best settings just objectively the best settings in the game right now so language obviously that's up to you frame rate that's going to be kind of you know most of this stuff is pretty pretty just you don't have to touch it the controls are really where we want to go so i personally like to go lowest remaining hp percent with the opponent lock on priority so basically instead of auto targeting a tank if a cinderace is hiding behind a snorlax Cinderace would be targeted first by you because they have the lowest remaining percent. Even if that Snorlax has 5%, that Cinderace has 6% HP remaining. Cinderace will have less HP overall, so we're going to target that Cinderace and take him out first, which is what we want because Cinderace is annoying. <laughs> Next, you'll want to set your attack controls to advanced controls. So basically what this will do, I don't know how it will be different for the mobile players versus Switch players because I am on my Switch currently, but this will separate your auto attacks between wild and enemy Pokemon. So what this is going to do for you, I don't know if you, if you don't have your control split, and you're attacking this enemy Snorlax and there's a core fish right here, sometimes your auto attack will auto target the core fish instead of the Snorlax when you're getting your ass handed to you by the Snorlax. So it's important to me personally and most Unite players out there that try to take the game seriously, we want to separate our attack control. So A will target the Snorlax, B will target the wild Pokemon. Um, if you're on mobile, I can't tell you what the controls are off the top of my head, but it'll be a very similar um you'll just go with advanced controls and you'll, you'll you'll be good so as far as the automatic basic attacks go um go ahead have that on or off it's really personal preference i like to have it on personally just so that way while i'm panning my camera my auto my auto attacks will continue going without me having to click the button or press the button so we have lock on icon that's it this is pretty much more useful for switch i would say um basically what this will do or uh, for mobile i would say but basically if you you're in range of an opposing pokemon you can just click the wheel right here or you can tilt the wheel um and it'll, it'll be a little bit different layout i think on mobile versus switch um just to auto attack them instead so i i would i would say probably have that on um again it's kind of up to you personal preference but i think that that's pretty good so next we have in motion pursuit mode uh, personally i think this <laughs> this is such a dumb option to have because if you have this on, I don't know if you guys have ever played, if you're new and you haven't played this game, you won't know, but if you guys are a veteran player of the game, you will notice that sometimes when you're trying to run away from a Pokemon and get auto attacks off, you'll just all of a sudden start running right back towards them. And that is why, because this in motion pursuit mode is enabled, you will want to disable in motion pursuit mode. Um, as far as this goes, just keep it standard, it's fine. Um, so scoring controls. Habits where you just have to press your button instead of hold it down. Um, it'll make your life a lot easier. Boom. Easy said. Easy done. As far as camera follows moves goes, uh, basically that will help you to kind of see a wider field of view. So I would recommend having that on when you're attacking. Move aim follows movement direction. That's fine if you want that on. Um, move aim snaps to nearby targets. That's fine. And then here's where we go. This is kind of up to you. Mini map. I keep it top left. That's where most people keep it. Button combination or single button. Uh, I just prefer single button personally. Mini map hidden. Uh, this, this doesn't matter. But aim assist is the big one. Turn your aim assist off because it'll screw you over. Just get used to controlling your own aim. Become a better aimer, and boom, you'll get good. All right, that's that's solid advice right there. All right, and as far as the other controls go, like the battle info, like you can just kind of do whatever you want to do here um, with that. But I'm going to keep my. I usually keep my boosted attack gauge off anyway. But if you want to keep it on, go for it. Turn it on or off. Like I, it just doesn't matter. I'll turn it on for why not? <laughs> just because. Uh, but yeah guys that'll pretty much do it those are what i personally believe are probably the better settings for the game um again at the end of the day it's all up to personal preference so if you play a little bit different settings than i do um yo good for you bro if you're making it work make it work um and with that said and done guys hope to see you in the streams that we stream pokemon unite here at least a couple of times a week alongside other nintendo and pokemon content so i will see you in the next one until then peace